Hi, I'm Maria Green. I'm going to show you a spread here in my art journal that I call lace. I put a piece of lace over the pages and sprayed some dilutions ink through the lace. Uh, one turquoise and one purple. And I let that dry. You can see the patterns pretty easily through the lace. And then when that was dry I started putting some white, white gesso on one side but it was too heavy so I decided instead to put some white paint down. Acrylic white paint. And I'm using a spackling knife. I did not want to cover up the entire pattern, so a little careful. Uh, the dilutions ink will always bleed through pretty much anything you put over it. So uh, I'm trying to preserve the pattern by putting some paint on top. And here you can see it has dried and you can see the pattern really well. I found two really old vintage photos that I made photocopies of. I realized too late that they were a bit too dark. Um, so if I, I could have set the printer to a lighter hue. But I wasn't thinking about that at the time. So I like old photos. These were sepia those brown really old photos so they did not transfer really well glued them down with some Mod Podge glue really well and here I'm using some gray paint that I'm putting on with a spackling knife. I'm not sure at this point where this is all going. But I like to try to tie all the colors in. I put some over the pictures and <coughs> wipe that off with a um, baby wipe. However, and it was too late on the girl, she doesn't show real well here, but <coughs> she basically disappeared into the background. <coughs> <coughs> And here is some ochre, yellow ochre that I put on just to get a little bit more uh, interest and color into the spread. And I cut a piece, of a, a picture out of a magazine for a face. And I actually glued it down uh, over the girl photocopy so that she does not show anymore. Magazine paper is a bit fragile, so it's good to be careful when you glue that down and try to get all the bubbles out. I'm going to put some white gesso over that picture, but uh, decided on clear so that I can see all the features. Also, the clear gesso has a really uh, strong tooth, like sandpaper, 
which makes it easy for anything you put on it to stick later. And it protects the magazine paper from tears or bleeds. And I have found some uh, baking doilies that I cut in half and I'm going to continue with the lace motif. It's kind of quite messy, all the hot patch comes through the, the holes, but if you wipe them off carefully so that the doilies don't break. I like doilies because you can make fields. A distinctive uh, additions to any spread or even paintings. <coughs> So you could hear almost the sandpaper when I drag my hand over the face. And here I'm laying down a foundation of some very pale beige, just like um, facial color, skin color. <coughs> and I put, I just put it on evenly all over like foundation and leave the features so I can work on them later. And I gave her a little bit of shoulder. It's so uh, magazine pictures are very easy to to do. You cut them out and paint on top. They don't look like the magazine picture once you're done. <coughs> I got that idea from Tamara Laporte, who does the life book classes. She makes some beautiful art using magazine pictures. As you can see, there's still some of the lace showing through. And here I'm aging the doilies by putting down some of the same facial color to make them kind of yellowed. It's kind of fun. And then I actually cut out some of the pieces of lace that I used as a, um, in the beginning to make the background pattern. So I'm putting down some Mod Podge and I'm actually gluing down the fabric just to have more of a lace theme going. It's a white lace and you can barely see it once it's incorporated. But it gives it some uh, character and uh, adds to the page. Here I'm putting Mod Podge. You can use any kind of medium or glue if you dilute it with water until it's pretty runny. And I'm using a, a very soft charcoal pen. It's a 6B, very soft, to do the features. I have a thing for charcoal lately, so I I like to do faces using charcoal. You can get so many interesting shades um, on the features. Got to outline her face got too thin, I thought. So then I have to fix that. I like to use my fingertip to spread it out and it, it really gives it a very soft look. 
and then I'm using a baby wipe which is uh, wet and it helps it to spread the charcoal around it makes, leaves a very soft tone as you can see I don't really use a brush for any of the features Here I'm taking some of that skin tone and putting it on with my fingertip. I'm filling in the eyes. The lips are a bit tricky. I wasn't all happy with um, with the chin and the shape of her face, so I added on some more. Oh, skin colored paint. I got a brush out here to work around the lips, unless yeah, it's difficult to get to very uh, fine detail. Put just a little bit of pink there on her lips. Accentuating the eyes. And here I put on another layer of dark umber to make it really brown. It does, she doesn't look like anything that I started with. It's fun to do these alterations and see where you end up. I love charcoal because of the grungy effect, you know, aged effect that you get. There are different softness grades, so you can uh, try different kinds to see which ones work the best for you. And I had a Faber Castell white pit pen. It's not that great for covering up things, but if you really need something white, you can run that pen a few times and it covers up pretty good. I'm using Stas on uh, black permanent ink. On a stamp, I wanted to add them to the top banner of lace. Just to add a little more interest. Here I'm <coughs> going to do a little stenciling through a doily. It did not show up very well. So well, actually, I ran out of memory, <coughs> so you 
you will see it in the next shot that I have glued down the doily. And there I put some uh, turquoise paint on that doily just to blend it in a little more. And I put half the doily on each side of the uh, children's painting. I mean, picture. And then some charcoal like indicating a door. And then I put some uh, aging color on those doilies too. Adding on a little more detail with my charcoal pen. And I decided to use some purple that's on ink for the lettering. And I stamped stepping through time. And then I took some actually silver paint. and rub that over the lettering just to tone it down a little bit and then I decided to put some gold paint over that just to warm it up a bit and I like that so I put some on the turquoise doilies too I debated about some uh, text on that page but I could not come up with anything I guess she's happy to see some kids coming through time there to visit. I brought out another stamp, or it's the same stamp to just put some on those doilies. The more layers, the more interest. Here are some close ups, you can see the lace. Not easy to see, but most the face. Thank you for watching.